and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here is the game Rover Mechanic Simulator, which features some interesting mechanics and systems. Let's inspect and remake the cleaning minigame to see how it works. It involves working with textures, copy pasting some pixels, and listening to where on the object the player clicks. Hopefully you'll learn something new that you can then apply to mechanics in your own games. By the way, I'm trying out this format because there were a lot of comments on my game design breakdown videos asking for a more actionable tutorial format, so let me know if you like this type of video. Do you prefer learning through a more guided path rather than separate tutorials? Then check out my complete step-by-step -step courses starting from scratch until the final polished games. If you're into programming, then get the Awesome Builder Defender course, learn how I make my own games using code, build an awesome game that involves mechanics from city builders, tower defense, and survival games. Or if you're into visual scripting, then get the VS course, which features not one, but three complete games. A simple platformer, an action RPG, and an awesome FPS. In the visual scripting course, all of this is built without a single line of code. All games in both courses start completely from scratch and go step by step until the final polished games. All of the lectures have their project files available at every step of the way, and I'm always active answering questions every single day in the Q&A section. So if you're looking for a more guided path, then check out the courses at unitycodemonkey.com courses. All right, so first just a quick overview of what the game's about. Like the name implies, it simulates being a rover mechanic. So you're on Mars, you accept orders, they give you a list of the components that need to be repaired or cleaned. You then identify those components, remove them by unscrewing all the screws and everything that's connected to it. Then you can take those components and either clean them up or remove the broken components and 3D print some new ones. Then you put it all back together and complete the order. It's a relatively simple gameplay loop, which is quite appealing if you enjoy taking things apart and putting them back together. And it is also a game made with Unity. If you want to pick it up, there's an affiliate link in the description, and if you use that, it will also be supporting the channel. And follow the curator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. The game features a bunch of interesting systems and mechanics, with one of them being the cleaning minigame, so let's see how it works. When you dismantle some objects, they might be dirty. If so, then you need to go into the cleaning station to clean them up. This opens up a nice minigame where you use the mouse to click and move the mouse to clean up the object. So you have to clean up the front, then rotate it, clean the back, and keep spraying until the dirt is all cleaned off. So in terms of logic, what this means is you need to store the dirty state throughout the whole object mesh. So you need to know not just whether or not the object as a whole is dirty, but rather you need to know exactly where that dirt is. And you also need to know exactly where the player has clicked, so you know what part of the object the dirt should be cleaned. So there are many ways you can achieve this. One approach would be by actually painting a texture. You can do all sorts of actions working directly with pixels inside of Unity. I've covered lots of those methods when I did the guest sprite sheets videos, just like I use them in my game Battle Royale Tycoon. You can use the function getPixel, which will grab any pixel from a texture. This returns a color, and with that color you can do whatever you want with it. So you can, for example, compare it with another color, and then paste that new color into another texture by using setPixel. Using these simple functions, you can achieve all of this functionality. So in this case, you have the normal solar panel texture. So the object is looking completely normal. Then you have another texture, except this one is of the object while fully dirty. So everything's still painted normal, but painted with dirt on top. And then you have another texture which works as the dirt mask. For the mask, you can make it a full RGB texture. Or since you just need one channel, you can just have a single color, so for example, just green. With those three textures, you can then make a very simple shader, either manually or with shader graph, take those three textures as inputs, and the output is the final visual, which is composed of the dirty texture where the mask is, and a normal clean texture where there's no dirt mask. So by combining all of these, you can probably see where this is going. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. All you need to do to make this minigame work is start off with the mask showing off all of the dirt. And then as the player clicks on the object, you simply paint some of those pixels in black. And as the mask becomes more painted in black, the dirt gets removed and the object starts looking clean. For that, another crucial part is knowing where the player actually clicks. You can do a simple raycast from the mouse position and hit the object. Then inside the raycast head structure, you have the field texture cord. This gives you the UV coordinates where the raycast actually hit. It means that on 0, 0 is on the lower left corner, whereas 1, 1 is on the upper right corner. So those are UV coordinates. If you want to learn some more about meshes and UVs, check out my mesh video. It's very useful to understand how all of this works under the hood. 
So again, with that, you have normalized UV coordinates. Then you just need to do some math in order to convert it into pixel coordinates. Then, like I said, you can use those functions to copy and paste pixels. You can go with the very simple approach of clicking on a part of an object and just making a square area fully clean. You can inspect the mass texture in real time to see what is being painted. But making a square doesn't really look too good, so you can just combine it with a simple brush texture. In this case, I made one with black in the middle and green outside, meaning that in terms of numbers, it has zeros all the way down the middle and one on the outside. So this makes it perfect for some multiplication. You just cycle through the home brush, grab the pixel color on that position on the brush, then you grab the pixel color of that position on the dirt mask, and just multiply them both. With that, now when the player clicks, you have a nice smooth area. Now there's one last thing missing from this minigame, it's how you identify just how much of the object is clean and how much is dirty. For this, you really just have some simple math. So you have the full dirt mask texture with full green on the whole object area. Then when you start the minigame, you essentially duplicate that dirt mask texture, and the clone one is what you actually use to paint, so not the original. And with those two, you can do some simple math. First you cycle through the whole full dirt mask and count up all of the dirty pixels. With that, you have the total. Then you simply cycle through the whole clone texture and again count up all of the dirty pixels. Just divide one by the other one and you have the full percentage of dirt. If you don't want the object to start off with 100% dirt, then you can also just apply some simple noise after you clone the full dirt mask. Then you just do that math as the player is painting the dirt mask. When the dirt mask texture is fully blank, then dirt percentage will be at zero and the object will appear fully clean. And finally, in order to handle on both sides, you really just apply a very basic animation. Since the whole system is based on raycast, everything works perfectly. Just literally rotate the object with simple animation and all of the connections will work perfectly. And that's how you can recreate the simple minigame, which works quite well. If you want to pick up the game, there's an affiliate link in the description, and if you use that one, you'll also be supporting the channel. And follow the curator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. As I said, I'm trying out this format because there were a lot of comments on my game design breakdown videos asking for a more actionable tutorial format, so let me know if you find this format helpful. Also, let me know what other games have some interesting mechanics that you'd like to know how they work. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.